stinks. That is right, you guys. This is Review Wednesday's Day of the Week special. Uh, gotta love that movie reviews. And a few hours ago, literally just a few hours ago, I sat down to watch the movie Project Power. Uh, this is a new movie on Netflix. Um, I'm sure you've seen the ads for it. I mean, it was it was if you're into if you're watching the show, that means you are into movie news and entertainment. And if you're into movie news and entertainment, you're probably aware of new projects and things happening in the world. Project Power being one of them. Um, I wasn't entirely interested in watching this film. Like I saw the trailer and I was like, oh, okay, it's you know it's uh, basically the uh, the movie Limitless with Bradley Cooper and Robert De Niro meets superpower superhero stuff it's that's essentially what the movie is um i will say it was not as good um i did not enjoy the movie as much as i liked limitless uh i feel like limitless was a little bit more um it was original because it was kind of the first one right um this particular movie was very generic there wasn't, they didn't infuse a lot of new thoughts, a lot of, or really any new concepts uh, to this particular film. Um, a lot of it was paint by numbers. It was a paint by numbers action flick. Um, it had the tone of Bright with Will Smith. Um, you know, another Netflix movie, which, you know, shocker. Um, I thought it was kind of funny. Uh, that they had another Netflix um, uh, television show, Easter Egg, uh, from Orange is the New Black. Uh, the the young girl, uh, can't think of her name. Hold on, let me bring it up real quick. Project Power. Okay. Uh, so there's Jimmy Fox, Joseph Gordon-Lovett, and uh, Dominique uh, Fishback. So Dominique Fishback, she plays the character Robin. Um, she's what, maybe like a 16, 17 year old girl, something like that. She's a drug dealer. What? But it's this new drug that if you, it's like this small little pill, it looks like a, an electrical light bulb, like a really small electrical light bulb. And you twist it, you put it in your mouth, you swallow it. And, um, and it gives you an unknown superpower specific to you. Um, so like if I take the pill, maybe I'll be super strong. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe I'll turn into water. Maybe I uh, have control of electricity. Who knows? Like it could be a, a myriad of different powers. But if you take the pill, where's the camera lens? If you take the pill, yeah, we'll, I'll work on that. If you take the pill, you might have a very different uh, power or reaction. So uh so she somehow it never the movie never explains how this girl uh like the 16 17 year old girl how she becomes a drug dealer it never explains where she gets her supply from we know like jamie fox is a guy um who uh is looking for his daughter and it, she's been kidnapped and so he's going through he comes down to new orleans and he's looking for the people that took his his daughter Somehow he has has a clue for uh, uh, to find this dude. His name is Newt. No idea how he got that clue, how he got that lead. I don't know. He just did. Um, never explained. And that, that's the that's our introduction to Jamie Foxx's character. Oh, I'm looking for this guy named Newt. He shows up to Newt's house and they have a fight and blah, 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 whatever. Joseph Gordon-Levitt is a police officer. Uh, who he also is, I, I don't want to call him a drug addict, but he is a drug user specific to this power drug, this superhuman power drug. It's the, apparently it's the only drug that he does or something. I don't know, which actually kind of makes sense. If you're a police officer, every now and again, you're going to find yourself in a position of trouble where having a little bit of superpower might help you in a bad spot. And this movie kind of shows how, uh, how that's the case. Oh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt found himself in a precarious situation. Let's pop a little Project Power, and off you go. Let's, you know, get the bad guy. Okay. Obviously, it can't be sanctioned by uh, New Orleans PD, obviously. Uh, portrayed by Courtney B. Vance, by the way. Okay. There is so much in the story of this movie that doesn't line up. Um... 
Well, you know what? Let's let's just start going through uh, all the different uh, all all the different aspects. First of all, let's talk about acting. Um, the acting in this movie wasn't great. It 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 wasn't terrible. It was passable. Um, this is not Joseph Gordon Levitt's uh, uh, finest work. In fact, I dare say that this is a paycheck for Joseph Gordon-Levitt. I also feel that this was a paycheck for Jamie Foxx and Courtney B. Vance that you saw for all of, what, three minutes? Five minutes, maybe, total? Um, yeah, you don't, you don't get anyone's best work here. If, everything was fine. Everything was passable. But it wasn't great. Uh, the, um, who is it? Dominique uh, Fishback, who plays Robin... Uh, the the I guess the main protagonist I guess you could say of the story she actually did a good job um, she probably turned in the best work but then again she also has the most to prove Jimmy Fox has an established career Joseph Gordon Levitt has an established career nobody's ever heard of Dominique Fishback before so she has something to prove she she did a pretty good job she also uh, they they have multiple scenes with her um, as a as a freestyle rapper, she does phenomenal work there. Obviously, like she's not freestyling in the movie; somebody else has written, you know, the the rhymes and beats for her, for her. Um, she's just reciting it, but you know, she plays it off really well. Um, uh, she was easily easily the best part of this movie, and she's the heart and soul of the movie. With, but the movie doesn't know that she's the heart and soul. The movie tries to set up. Um, Jamie Foxx and the relationship with his daughter as, oh, that's supposed to be the heart and soul, but you don't know where the daughter is. Like, where is she? Who knows? And inadvertently, it's uh, it's the 16-year-old drug dealer girl, Robin, played by Dominique Fishback, who ends up being the heart and soul of the movie. And she, she does a fine job. Everybody else, and not just the main three, but, oh, man, there's... Um, <laughs> There's uh, a, uh, a Latin woman from uh, somewhere in South America. They don't ever say where she's from in South America. Um, it's just a very generic, oh, you want to be the kingpin of South America? Here you go. And she's, you know, she's in cahoots with the bad guy. Her delivery is so bad, you guys. It is so bad. The villains have horrible delivery. Like, there's... <sighs> The acting is not great. So all of that is to say, I'm going on a, on a, on a scale of one to twenty. I'm going to give. Uh, I'm going to rate their acting at a nine. Nine out of twenty. I did not think very highly of it. It wasn't the worst acting I've ever seen, but it was for Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Jimmy Fox. They really could have elevated this movie to a really fun, charismatic spot, but they didn't. It was a paycheck. Um, there was nothing interesting in anyone's acting choices, you know, with the exception of Dominique Fishback. But, you know, 9 out of 20, that's what I'm giving him. All right, so let's move on to directing. The directing of the film, everything was cookie cutter. I've seen all of this stuff before. The cinematography looked like it was pulled straight out of uh, the movie Man on Fire. Uh, which was, what was that, 2004? So 16 years ago. And and we're still you we're still using filming techniques from 16 years ago. There was nothing inventive. The action was not well choreographed, and they knew it. So they did like those shaky cams and quick like quick cuts and zoom ins and uh, even like the direction that they give the actors. Everything is stoic. Everything is plain. Um, this is a cookie cutter, low budget action film which is trying to be a high budget action film, but you can just tell it's not. There's nothing interesting from a directing standpoint. Um, all the technicals, I get like the explosions, every the CGI, not great. Um, you know, cause they're people with, you know, superpowers for five minutes. Um, and then those superpowers, you know, wear off and they do, they do this thing. Like whenever Joseph Gordon Levitt takes the, the superpower drug pill thing, um, they zoom in on his eyeball. And, and in fact, they do this with everybody. Anyone in the movie who takes this drug, they zoom in on the eyeball and you get to see how the eyeball changes DNA or whatever. Like it, it changes in forms and there's like this kind of feature that happens, you know, within the skin and eyeball and like the surrounding area across the board. It happens to everybody. 
and it becomes very uninteresting. If you do it to one person, okay, cool. You do it once, maybe twice, but they do it for every single person. So the choices in the shots, the choices in the editing, the choices in you know pretty much everything, the lighting is pretty much the only thing that I would say was good. I was okay with how the movie was lit. Everything else, it just, I don't know, it just didn't work for me. Uh, so in that regard, I mean, it was, there was nothing that was, like, bad. It didn't, like, put me off. But I'm going to put directing also at a 9. Acting's at a 9. Directing, directing's at a 9. I didn't, um, I didn't think that they did anything interesting or inventive with how the movie itself was made. Same thing with the, the storytelling. And speaking of the telling of the story, let's get into writing. So the writing of the movie. Um, again, this is a cookie cutter story. I feel like I've seen this story a thousand times before. There's a new drug on the streets. Somebody is personally affected by it. But the cops need to stop the drug from being on the streets. And oh no, there's a helpless innocent that gets caught in the middle. And of course, she's not Robin. The Robin character is not exactly a helpless innocent. She is directly involved. But for intents and purposes of the story, um, she needs to be the heart and soul, or rather, by default, I guess she becomes the heart and soul of the film. Whew. Um. Yeah, I did not care for the re the dialogue was not very good. There was nothing interesting. Every everything was cookie cutter. Um, there is um there were a few different moments in the film where, uh, so when Jamie Fox when his character who knows what his character's name is I have no idea when Jamie Fox's character meets uh the Robin character for the first time he thinks that she has information about something so he kidnaps her I yeah I'm telling spoilers because I don't care I don't think anybody out there is that emotionally involved in. Oh, I really wanted to watch Project Power. Now you're going to ruin it for me. If you feel that way, stop watching. I don't care. Having said that, when Jamie Foxx's character meets the Robin character for the first time, he kidnaps her, puts her in the bed of his truck, and locks her in there. He, he threatens to hurt her. He never does. He comes off as a real hard character like, you better watch out or I'm actually going to hurt you. And you believe that he is going to hurt her. And then over the course of maybe an hour, they become friends. Like, he abducts her. And then maybe, yeah, like, in, the whole movie takes place in, like, a day, if not a night. Um, so he abducts her. The girl's mother has no idea where she is. That's a storyline that they never resolve. Um, she just kind of comes home and everything's like, oh, are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Well, great. Did you get me my soup? Da -da 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 -da. Oh, there's another part. Um, Joseph Gordon Lovett is like, hey, I need more drugs for my drug dealer, this 16 year old girl. Why, why is he getting his supply from a 16 year old girl? I don't know. So he's a cop. He's a cop, you guys, and I get it. Some cops make bad, but that's the thing. Like, he's a cop that makes bad decisions, but he also is the good cop. So, like, like he's living in both worlds. He's living in both worlds. There's no consistency to any of these characters. Anyway, Joseph Gordon-Levitt is looking for Robin, and somehow he tracks her down. And then he starts interrogating her, like, what? Why were you with this guy? Tell me all about Jamie Foxx. He's a bad guy. But they never explain how Joseph Gordon-Levitt knew that those two were paired up. How did he know that they were together? There, there's very little explanation as to why anything happens in this movie. Things just do. And you just kind of have to accept that things happen. There's, I don't want to say there's zero logic. There's minimal logic to why the characters do what they do. And it's a lot of it relies on that kind of old world thinking of, I'm the John Wayne. I'm the hero. I know what's best for everyone. And people just make bad choices and bad decisions and they just run and they just run with it. And that's annoying to me because there's no driving force as to why anybody is doing what they're doing. You know, except for Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx is like, hey, I'm looking for my daughter. Like, I'm going to. And he's, he murders people. 
He murders people. And then at the end of the movie, once he saves the day and everything's predictable, you know exactly. Like, they set up the last act of the movie in the first 10 minutes. You know exactly how this movie is going to end. They set it up. So, so when it actually happens, there's no surprises. There's no like, oh, I didn't see that coming. Oh, that is so cool. Oh, well, nah. no, there's no surprises whatsoever. So for that reason, I give the writing an, oh, I thought I gave it a lower score. I gave it 11 out of 20. So as I'm ranting, I, I feel it deserves a lower score. But here we are, 11 out of 20. Moving on. The takeaway, the overall takeaway of the movie. Um, I th okay, I think I, I understand. I'm, I'm going to reveal the score for the takeaway. Takeaway is three. Three out of 20. Uh, the writing of the movie was 11 out of 20. Flip that. The writing should have been three. The overall takeaway should be 11. The takeaway of the movie isn't it it isn't the it isn't the worst thing in the world. It's it's a like I said, it's a cookie cutter low budget action movie that has no emotional stakes and uh, and people just kind of do stuff. Um it has very little uh, moral teaching. It has very little guidance. Um, there's very little to learn from this. But if you, if all you're looking for is just the, like a turn your brain off the door, uh, turn your brain off at the door, and just you know eat some popcorn, sit down with your family, and just watch a really dumb action movie, perfect. It's it it does it, it delivers on exactly what it's supposed to do. Which brings me to the last point of effectiveness. How effective was this movie? I think they I think the creators, the directors, the producers, I think they wanted to create something a little bit more maybe, maybe poignant. Maybe I'm putting words in people's mouths. Um uh maybe that's maybe poignant is too high of a bar uh to get with this particular film, but I I I think they knew what they were making. It was a turn your brain off of the door. Uh, kind of action film. Uh, they knew it was low budget. They knew they wanted to have you know a couple big stars to bring people in, uh, which they got. Um, it did kind of what they needed it to do. They need a high profile uh, movie for Netflix to you know continue to rein people in. You know, it's the action wasn't entirely terrible. It wasn't great, but it wasn't terrible. I've seen much worse. Um, it was okay. It was fine. Um, and they just needed a vehicle to, you know, tide people over for a little while. We're in a, we're in a dry spell. And of, of course, this is the kind of movie that's been on the books long before COVID happened. So, so they were planning this before, but you know, it, it did what they needed it to do. It did what they wanted it to do. And it's, if you're just looking to kill a few hours, if you have nothing else to watch, yeah, go ahead and put it on. It's it's a good turn your brain off the door kind of movie. And for that reason, I'm actually going to give effectiveness a high score. I'm giving effectiveness 18 out of 20. So let's add all of those numbers up together. And this is the final score for Project Power. Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. All right, you guys, that is that is my official score. I'm giving Project Power a 50 out of 100. That's right, a 50%. Uh, uh, you know, it could have been better. It wasn't. It wasn't the worst thing in the world. It was far from great. Um, I, I think that, it. you know, like I said, it could have... It, could have had other places to go. I didn't love it. I don't ever need to watch this again. Uh, when my girlfriend found out that I watched the movie without her, she was like, "Oh, I wanted to watch that with you." And I was like, "No, no, no, you don't. Mm -mm. You're, you're good. You don't need to watch this movie." Anyway, guys, have you seen Project Power? Do you have a different take on it? Do you think it's better than I'm? Uh, giving it credit for, or do you actually think that it's worse? Um, let me know in the comment section below. Go ahead and jump on down. Let's have a conversation about it. Anyway, guys, that.